Yeah. Hello, folks. I want to welcome you to this episode of the Profit Easy One. I've been, uh, I'm getting ready to do a video on the Book of Enoch to prove to y'all that that book is a big lie. And it's deceiving a lot of people. It's been brought about not by man as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, it wasn't written by men like that. It's a book written by ministers of Satan to deceive the followers of Christ. But I'm not going to get into that right now. Because as I was doing that, I saw a thing on the book of Philip. The Gospel of Philip, as it's called. Now, many years ago, I read, I read the Apocrypha. I didn't know the scriptures like I know them now. And to me, it all seemed pretty good. And the things that I heard seemed pretty good. In fact, I got to give credit to some of it because uh, there was a book called The Book of Wisdom. And uh, another one by Solomon, Ecclesiasticus, uh, uh, several other books. And they did do me some good because at the time, I was reading them. I was an alcoholic. I went out every night to get drunk and I would drink mixed drinks. And because of things that I saw in the Bible and things that I saw in that book or in some of those books, boom, I quit cold turkey. Went 11 months. I would still maybe go into bars, but I wouldn't drink. I'd drink cranberry juice or orange juice or a soda. And I'd look around and go, man, was I being like this? Huh? You know, it's like a friend of mine has had, he's got a lot of axioms. And one of them is, now this isn't all good, but it is a little bit humorous. He has a, a lot of wise old sayings. He's a very wise old man. But he said, uh, there's four things in life he hated. He hated being around drunks while he was sober. He hated being around sober people when he was drunk. He hated his wife's boyfriend. And he hated his girlfriend's husband. <laughs> you know, I'm not advocating those things now. I'm just saying. Okay, but Swinney, anyway, what happened is I went ahead and read and listened to the Gospel of Philip. And this one's much easier to get across. Although I'm ready to get the one on Enoch across. Because, wow, that thing's deceiving a lot of people. And so are a lot of these other books now. All right, so let's get into this Gospel of Philip. Now, it, like the Book of Enoch, the alleged Book of Enoch, uh, well, there is a book now called the Book of Enoch, but it is not something from God. But they both contradict the Bible. And, you know, it says in the Bible that the the Apostle said that even if they or an angel from heaven should come to you preaching to you another gospel, let him be accursed. And then it repeats the same verse. And let me tell you, these books are bringing to you a different gospel. And those people who are teaching these books, you mark those people and have nothing to do with them. All right, let me get on with this. You know, this book, it reminds me of the Quran in a way, in the way that it is written. You know, and that's another thing. I hope I'll, I'll remember to get back to that. But to, that these books, Enoch and the Gospel of Philip have in common. And that is that they are not written like the rest of the Bible. If you look at Enoch, where the verses are separated, totally different from anything in the Bible. And there's a lot of contradictions in there, but we'll get to that another time. And this book, the Gospel of Philip, like the Quran, at the beginning of each chapter, it has a title. Like it might say, the Book of Mary, or the Book of Moses, or, you know, something like that. Well, this Gospel of Philip is written the same way. And, uh, 
Let's see. So I'm going to get into a little bit here. Uh, well, well, let me just first say, when it, the book first starts out, the first several, what they might call little books, are very confusing. Very confusing. And God says he is not the author of confusion. This didn't come from God, this stuff in here. And so many things that are written in here are plain, simple, dumb, no real wisdom to any any six-year-old would know these things. Much like in the Quran, where there God says, show me some parables. He doesn't use the word parables. He calls it something else. They compare with mine and, and, you know, get help even to bring them. Well, those parables in there, they're terrible. They're terrible. They're nothing like the parables that are in the Bible. Okay, now, so like I say, it's kind of written like the Quran because it'll have a title and then it'll get into things. So, one of those titles, well, like I say, first off, the very beginning there, it's just confusion, total confusion. And then, now I'm not going to get into all of this. I did go through and listen to the whole book and read it. And I'll tell you, it was getting to the point I kept wanting to just cut it off. and said, ah, it's enough for me to do a video. I don't need to hear anymore. I didn't want to hear anymore. But because I am one of the elect, I am not being deceived by it. And this is why I encourage you people to become the elect. To know the word of God. To read the entire thing. Study that thing. So that you won't be deceived. There's so many people. Like the Bob says. Many. Many will be deceived. Most are going to be deceived. It says that Satan will be deceiving the whole world. And that if it were possible. He would even be able to deceive the very elect. Let me tell you, if you're not one elect, you need to become one because you're going to be getting deceived. And I tell you that in so many of my videos. And I'm telling you this to encourage you to read the word of God. You know, they're going to be deceiving people in all kinds of ways. Saying, oh, here's the Christ. There is the Christ. And people who don't know are going to go listen. You know, I ask people so often. I run into people and I talk to them about. I say to them, well, you know about the mark of the beast, right? And they're like, hmm, the mark of the beast. What's that? And you go try to explain it to them, and they've never heard of it. And I've run into this all the time. People just don't know the word of God. And because of that, they'll be deceived. They will be taking the mark of the beast and not even realizing that God warned you not to do it. And see, that's why you got to get the word of God in you. All right, but let's get back to this. The title of this one is Mary and the Holy Spirit. And in it, I believe right in that one little tiny book, or maybe in the book before then, in that one, it calls the Holy Spirit a woman. And one, it says it's a woman. And in another one, when it's talking about Mary, couldn't have really had the Holy Spirit impregnate her because the Holy Spirit was a she. And women don't have sex together. That's what this book tells you. Whereas the Bible tells you something different. All right. It says. In another book, I think it's called The Lord's Father. You know, I didn't take a super good notes on this. But here's what it says. And this is a quote. The Lord would never say. My father, which is in heaven. That's what it says in the gospel of Philip. It says the Lord would never say. My father, which is in heaven. Yet in what is known as the Lord's prayer. That's how he told us to pray. And he spoke about his father, which was in heaven. So like I said, it's coming to you contradictory and preaching to you another gospel. So do not believe, don't even read the Gospel of Philip. I've, I've done the homework for you. I've done this for you. So you don't need to get into it. In fact, stay away from it. And on one called Possessions. From what I read out of it, oh, this book is bad. It's sneaky. 
Yeah, like it, like the Bible says that they privily bring in damnable heresy, sneakily bring these things in. But this one called possessions it seems almost like it is encouraging you to steal. To be a klepto. Here's what it says. It says, from every house that you are in, take out possessions. You know, I've known a kleptomaniacs who were like that. If they could, heck, I've had people take things from me like that. If they could, they would. I knew people who went to spy school for the Navy. And that's what they were, they were told and actually allowed to do was to go out and steal things. Go into buildings, go into buildings on military bases, government buildings, and see what they could steal. And that was part of their training. All right. But here's what it says. Just from every house that you're in, take out possessions. But take them to the, the father's house and do not steal what is inside and run off. Hmm. Boy, it sounds something like the Catholic Church would have you do. Yeah, go steal from others and bring it to us, but don't steal from us. It's like when they had their Inquisition, and just like Hitler did with the Nazis. You know, whenever they would accuse these people, when they went on their witch hunts, and they would take these people and either get them to convert or, be, or they would kill them, torture and or kill them, they would also take their possessions. No, it didn't go to their family. They didn't get to inherit their father's goods. No, the church took it. And like I say, I believe most of these books, what's behind them is the Catholic Church and the Jesuit organization. That is what behind is behind these books like Enoch and this book. And these books are causing division. I hope you saw my video dealing with that and how th these things that are causing divisions in the church because that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to divide and conquer. But we need to be of all, all of one mind and knowing what the word and the will of God is. And we need to work towards getting those things here on earth, making it here on earth as it is in heaven. All right, let me see here. Oh, and by the way, when it says bring it into the Father's house, anywhere in the Bible, when they use the term Father to refer to God, it is always capitalized. Not in the Gospel of Philip. Like I said, there's so many things different about the writing of this book and of Enoch when compared with the Bible. It's enough to show, I mean, that's just one thing, but all the evidence leans against it. But there's a lot of deceivers out there. We're going to deceive people because they don't know what the real word of God says. All right, now. Oh, and there's one called the Lord Ascending. And it says, in contradiction to what the Bible says, that Christ ascended first and then he died. Not how the Bible says it. He died on the cross and then he ascended. Wow. The Muslims want to make you think he didn't even die. It was all a fake. Somebody else did it. You know, anything to, get, to keep you from believing in that name and believing in the Son of God in anything to keep you from believing in Jesus Christ because that is your way to salvation and those wicked do not want you to be saved they don't want to be saved and they don't want you to be saved like I shared with someone today in a comment out of from Matthew 23 woe to you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites but not only do you not enter the kingdom of heaven but you want to stop those who are entering from going in and that's what this stuff's about. It's all from the deceiver. Satan is a deceiver. In the Quran, there, God calls himself the greatest of all deceivers. Hmm. So I wonder who he is. All right, now. So that's pretty, pretty crazy there. 
All right. I can't even read my little writing there, so let's get on to this next one. There's another one titled, Jesus Tricked Everyone. Let me tell you, this thing gets worse and worse, this book, as it goes. It gets into where it, what it's like to me is a book from some old pagan religion where the priest had sex with women because they do talk a good bit about sex in this book and how that the priest body is clean and all this. And, you know, there, there still are, there's a place in Peru now where they just want to have sex with anybody. Any tourist, anybody comes there, if you're a guy, the women want to have sex with you, if you're, it's just a, a city based on flesh. And it used to be churches like that, where you went and had sex with the, the priest or the priestess, and, and it, that would save you. Yeah, and I'm sure you paid them money too, so they were just, not only, boy, they were super prostitutes there. All right, prostitutes and whores, the whores of Babylon. But, in the one where it says Jesus tricked everyone, what it says in there is that Jesus hid his word. Jesus didn't hide his word. He gave us his book called the Bible. And his word is in that. That is his word. He sent us the New Testament. That was his word. All right. And another one. It's titled, God is a man-eater. Woo! There's a song that, he's a man-eater. Oh, boy. It says, basically, basically what it says is that therefore humans are sacrificed to him. goes on with some other things, but let me tell you. This is another one of those books from the ministers of Satan. And it goes downhill from here, even. It goes downhill. And like I say, it got tough for me to listen to it. Even at this point, I, I was ready to cut it off, but I, I stayed with it. All right, so. And then in the one entitled, The Eucharist is Jesus. Well, that sounds like a Catholic thing too, doesn't it? Uh-huh. It says that Jesus came to crucify the world. He didn't come to crucify the world. The Bible says that he came to save the world. Yet the world crucified him. So like I say, once again, the gospel of Philip is contradictory and it's a new gospel. And it is not to believe. It is to be accursed. It's an accursed thing and stay away from it. Now, and the one called marriage. There's a few things about marriage and all in there. Like I say, so much it reminds me of the way that the Quran is written. Uh, although most of these little books were shorter than a lot of the ones in the Quran. They're, although the Quran has very short ones also. But, let's go. About marriage. It says a few things. And this is, quote, Think of sex. It possesses deep powers, though its image is filthy. I don't think you'd find something like that in the Bible. And some of the other things it says about sex here are really bad. And it's like, wow, a lot of things very contradictory to the Bible. And about spirits and about sex. A little bit like Enoch with the angels having sex with women with that big lie. Yeah, the, when I got to that point, really there, man, I, I just, I really, really wanted to cut off. And I even I had to pray about it a couple of times. And it seemed like, boom, it ended quick, shortly afterwards. So I was glad. Although it did get bad. It, it gets to where it goes from there into a, a very humanistic philosophy. Basically saying that. You can find God in yourself and that you're a God, basically. That's basically what it is, like a very humanist philosophy. And then there's a whole bunch of talk about the chrism, whatever that is. But they say that's where the word Christian came from. It's where the word Christ came from. 
and the whole thing about it, like I say, sounds like something from some ritualistic pagan religion. And then it talks about some special oil it mentions several times that you need. You don't find that in the Bible either. And then it talks about how some people laughing, they go to heaven and they come back. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's totally contradictory. And then so much of the rest of the book just really starts knocking Christianity and gets more and more demonic. So I just want to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm leading you in. I'm going to let you know about the book Enoch too. And I don't want to have to get into too many of these books. But I want to tell you the best thing to do is stick with the King James Bible. Not that it's perfect. But it's probably ain't nothing better. Okay. Uh, and as far as the Gospel of Philip, let it be accursed. And you're going to see the same about the, the book of Enoch when I get into that. Let it be a curse. Don't even pick it up to read it. Don't bother. Because it's designed to create the vision. Yeah. It's designed to create the vision. And that and this book lead to things that you see all over today. The flat earth theory. The earth isn't flat. If the earth was flat. It'd be daylight in China and here at the same time, but it's not, right? It can't be flattening because if it's flat, when the sun would come up, <laughs> the light would be on everything. And when it's on the other side, then everything would be dark. It is not a flat earth. And those theories are coming from these books, along with several other theories dealing with aliens, another boss lying teaching another deception so anyway that's all i want to say just uh i went ahead and did that figured i'd give you all this video here i want to get you the one on enoch because that's a more popular book and way 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 too many people were just being deceived by it and believing in it and praising those people who are teaching and pushing it. Oh, and the people who are pushing these things. Oh, they're not some good people. I'll get into that when I do the one on the book of Enoch. All right. That's it for now. Thank you for your time and listening. Remember, stay away from that. It's got doctrines of demons in there. And so does the book of Enoch. Stay away from that. And I'll let you know why soon. Lord willing. In an upcoming video. It's possible I get it tomorrow, I don't know. But just bear with me. If I live, I'll get it to you. Alright. Remember, pray. Read, study your Bible so that you won't be deceived. So that you'll be one of the elect and they're not going to deceive you. Alright. And repent from your sins before it's too late. Alright. That's it for now. Catch you on the rebound.